Hey, welcome. Uh, I'm Bob Fuller, and um, you know, recently, I've got, I've had, I don't even know how many, uh, probably, oh, Jesus, the, the two, you know, like two, probably two, requests to uh, draw a an iguana. <laughs> so, you know, in order to keep my fan base, you know, under wraps and you know, kind of. Uh, satisfied, if you will. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So uh, in this lesson, I'm gonna. Uh, I've actually taken a a uh, recent picture of myself, uh, modified that slightly, and I'm gonna use that as the basis for this. And I think I think you're gonna I think you're really gonna love this. Uh, no, no, really. I I, I think you will. I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> you love it. So hang in there. I'm gonna get started, and uh, it's gonna be kind of fun. Let's uh, let's have at it. Okay, so we've imported this into um, Adobe Illustrator because we're going to use these, this vector brush, you know, this thick and thin kind of vector brush um, to do our line art. And so I'm going to zero in. I, I'm using this blob brush, um, which is kind of a... I like this this brush. It's really fun. Um, a lot of people don't use it. They're, they use... Uh, just create the strokes with... Um, you know, they did the pencil brush and then create a stroke, a vector stroke to it, but I... I you know, I might use that for something very graphic, but for like a hand-drawn, vectorized look, um, I like this blob brush. I wish they'd improve it, but uh, that's, you know, I don't know if they'll do it. Anyway, so let's go here. I've got a six-point uh, brush, and then I got the variation here with the pressure. So to quickly explain that to you, if you use Adobe Illustrator, um, you know, so it's got this blob brush, and, and when I push down, if I push down harder, it'll go all the way out to six-point you know line and then if I lighten up on it I can go all the way down to pretty much zero or you know that just fading out that tip so and it's dictated by pressure and you can change that although I don't know why you would ever change it on based on any of these um, uh, things here pressure allows that thick and thin look I guess you could do fixed and then you have a six point just thick clean six point um, line uh, as you draw but I like the pressure one for my drawing style so I'm just gonna say okay there and oh, one more thing I wanted to show you there, real quick. So the fidelity of the line. Um, if I if I turn it up to smooth, and I draw that line, um, let me just show you. And I draw a curved line like that. It'll it'll kind of notice how it smoothed out that line. So if I do it like this, see how it smoothed it out? Um, that's because the fidelity of the line is set pretty way pretty well all the way up to smooth. If I go down here pretty far and I take it down, let's take it all to the other side to just quickly show you this. And I take this line and I do this number. See, it didn't make much of a change. You know, it kept that wiggliness to it. So um, now there are a lot more points on that line. Let me let me go back to that. Uh, redo blob brush. So if I go here and I click on that line, there are a lot more points on that line. If I select it, uh, let me see if I can select it and show you. <laughs> let me zoom in here a little bit. And let's see if we can. There are. A ton of points on this line. Um, they're all over the place. Um, see, as I as I'm going over the top here, there are a lot of a lot of points here, and so it makes for a, a larger file size. I got a lot of RAM, a lot of memory, so um, it doesn't really bother it. And you know, I, I think you'd have to do a really complicated drawing before it would bog down your entire uh, computer. So let me just back out of here, go back to zero, and let's delete that line. Just want to show you that really quick. Show you how the thick and thin and the accuracy of the line is set in that settings for the blob brush. Blob brush is right here. This little uh, this little uh, symbol right here, that's the blob brush. And if you hover over it, you can see that it says blob brush. Uh, shift B, it will bring up the blob brush. So anyway, let's get this out of the way and get back to the project. Okay, so I'm going to start using the blob brush here and just start drawing this thing. And at some point in time, I may uh, speed it up here um, just so you don't have to hear me blathering on all the time. But for right now, I'm, I'm going to blather. Um, I'm going, going to uh, play around here with this thick and thin thing and just see what we can come up with. Notice that, oh, I, I wonder if I, you know what? <laughs> come on, Bob. Select all, delete. Let's let's go back here and make sure I got the settings the way that I want them. I want them to be. I actually like it about right there. So it's a little more accurate, uh, or excuse me, a little a little more smooth. Uh, not all the way to the to the very end of accuracy. Um, smooths out the lines just a little bit. That works best for me. 
So, uh, here we go. Uh, starter again. Just so want to go here and just create the lines. And I'm not sure if I really want to do this line weight because it's almost too. Well, let's see what happens here. Yeah, I, no, I guess that line weight is pretty good actually. So. Um, and you know you can in in drawing you know in in inking the way that I ink is um, you know I keep it all I might I might do something heavy in an area a heavier line if I want to but overall I'm kind of just doing the thick and thin thing keeping the line weight reasonably consistent you can do you can get some cool effects by doing your whole outside edge of your line like the outside part of the art really heavy if you want I don't you know for this one I don't really feel like I I want to do that. Um, there's, you know, you can just try out the look and see what you think. So you could change the size of this blob brush if you wanted to, you know, do that. Um, and if you're following along at home, <laughs> which would be kind of cool if you were, um, but uh, you, you can uh, you can change the blob brush settings, you know, pretty much any time uh, during this during this deal. So let's see if we can um, get some lines here that we like. Oh, I don't like that one too much. Let's see. So I'm pretty much um, just kind of interpreting. I kind of, you know, I do that rough sketch and then I kind of come in here and just interpret it the way that I want. And you should do the same thing. You feel free like you can make edits, you know, as you go. Um, otherwise you just get stuck in that, in the rough, or you can get stuck in that rough drawing phase um, where you, you're just waiting for it to be perfect before you launch out and do the fin finished art and uh, that's not been a that's not been a winning combination for me because I will overthink it um, and uh, you know it'll, it'll take it could take forever for me to finally get started once I do it I can actually work pretty quickly but it's it's just the getting started you kind of just or at least maybe it's maybe it's just me it could very it could very well be um, but I, I tend to uh, to overthink it if I go if I take that too far Okay, so let's see here. Um, so notice what the blob brush is doing too. It's every one of these strokes is an actual little chunk of its own. And um, as I go here, you can see that the individual, as I highlight over there's a bunch of little individual strokes. I probably will unify those. And the way to do that is, uh, let's see, I've got the sketch locked, right? So I don't move it. And if I just simply select all these and grab them there like that, and I go over here to the uh, Pathfinder tool. I can unify them together. Now they're now they're all. See, it's all one big chunk. It's all one piece. So it's kind of connected them all. That's very helpful um, when you're doing recoloring of lines later. So that's a good thing to do. You can do it at the very end of this though. Too once you got your black art or black line art the way you want it, you can just go in there and and um, unify the whole thing with the Pathfinder tool. So you click on the Pathfinder tool, and this is the one that uh, uh, is Unite. Okay, and that's the one I, I use to pull all that together. Close that up. And so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this drawing um, and probably probably just talk to myself while I do it, um, but not force you to listen to me. Um, and then I'll come back when I've got the line art and the drawing pretty close to finish. We'll do last little touch-up to it, and, and uh, voila. Uh, so I will be back. I'm going to speed this up, and, and here we go.
Well, there you have it. That's the iguana. Um, if you enjoyed this uh, uh, little tutorial, uh, please subscribe to my channel and please share it with others. Uh, I'm trying to build this YouTube channel and I'm going to be doing all kinds of fun uh, graphic design and illustration stuff from children's books to packaging to all kinds of stuff. Uh, projects that I work on literally every day and have been for the last, never mind, many decades. Um, anyway, um, uh, thanks for watching this and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.